Good afternoon. Welcome aboard MIG again. Today I thought that for the story, I would share a little funny story of something that happened to me um, when I was on a delivery. The delivery was for a boat called Change and Tags, and I delivered Change and Tags with the owner, Dick Shirley. Uh, many, many times. It was one of those situations where I never really felt like it was work. <laughs> it was really a privilege to be paid by Dick to go on these deliveries, these offshore deliveries on his awesome island packet. Uh, Change in Tags was a, and I say was because it was destroyed in... Uh, the hurricane that hit St. Thomas uh, a few years back. And it was very yeah. sad for all of us that had ever sailed on Change and Tags. And there were a lot of people that sailed on Change and Tags over the years because Dick would invite people down, basically give them a free charter uh, in the Virgin Islands. Anyway, we would deliver Change and Tags from Norfolk, Virginia to St. Thomas and back every year. And I don't remember how many years I did that, but suffice it to say that Dick and I, and uh, both of my kids, Jimmy and Emily, have a lot of time offshore together. Um, I would go anywhere in the world with Dick. Uh, I hope he comes along on at least one passage of my trip around the world, although MIG is pretty small. So... Dick might, well, Dick was a submariner before in the Navy, so uh, this little boat shouldn't be a big deal for Dick. Anyway, back to the story. Well, this story is about refueling your boat probably 800 miles offshore, at least 600 miles offshore. So we were on one of our normal deliveries from Norfolk to St. Thomas, and the wind died. And keep in mind that while I tend to sit still when the wind dies and wait for the wind to pick up again, this was a delivery, and Dick was paying me for every day that we were offshore. <laughs> so he was, he was financially motivated to keep the boat moving. Not just that, but he, I'm sure at that point, I don't remember, but I'm sure he already had some friends that were going to meet him to sail down in the Virgin Islands. So he needed to get that boat down to St. Thomas. And we had motored until the tank was almost empty and we had, uh, I think about half the trip left at this point to get to St. Thomas. And... <laughs> So Dick, Dick, comment in the comments if I'm forgetting something or getting this wrong. Again, it's my memory. But if I remember right, Dick came up and asked me if it was true that, and I may have told him this before, but I, the way I remember it, he asked me, is it true that if you need some provisions or toilet paper and you call down one of these big ships that's passing that they help you and I, I said yeah it's it's actually a rule of the sea that they have to now that may be the wrong way that that's told it may be that that's exactly opposite and I asked Dick that I don't remember Dick comment in the comments anyway we decided that we were going to hail a ship that was on AIS and tell them that we were almost out of fuel. And it, it just so happens that that ship was coming fairly close to us. Uh, it, it wasn't going to hit us, but it was, it was within a couple miles CPA. 
So we got on the radio and radioed the ship and we said, hey, we are just sitting out here and we're out of fuel. And so we can't move out of your way. Um, and he answered, the, the captain answered, uh, do you need fuel? And we said, yes, we cannot continue motoring toward our destination if we don't get more fuel. Now, we could have sailed, but we left that out. We just said we can't continue to motor to our destination without more fuel. And there was no wind, so we truly were just sitting there. That, that is the truth. And the captain said, if we were to give you some fuel, would you be able to continue towards your destination? And we said, yeah. And so he said, well, we will maintain station, come alongside, and we will transfer some fuel to you. And I would have said, no, no way, man. <laughs> That's too scary. But Dick, having been in the Navy, uh, this wasn't a big deal to him. He wasn't, he wasn't at all intimidated by big ships offshore. <laughs> and so he motored his boat. I did not captain the vessel. He motored the vessel over and came alongside this big orange ship. And uh, we came up alongside and everybody on the crew was right there. And they were at uh, deck level so that our mast was right at their deck level. And uh, we were flying some women's panties off the, <laughs> off the main halyards. So they saw that. We thought that was funny. Uh, well, Dick did <laughs> No, I did too. I thought it was funny too. And um, so they got a big charge out of that. And they started to lower these great big 50-gallon uh, plastic drums down to us full of diesel. And they asked, how many can you take? And if I remember right, we took 16 of those things. And it took it took well over an hour to transfer them down and then we just used our little shaker siphon thing to put them into the tank. And, and they, we asked them if they wanted those back, and they said, no, just keep them. So Dick, from then on, used those along, uh, on long passages. He would put four of those on the deck uh, fu full of fuel uh, for motoring back to the States and whatnot. But we also sent them up uh, some Johnny Walker black i think it was and a what a couple of t-shirts from change and tags and they sent us down uh a signed picture of the ship with all the crew's signature on it yeah that was one of the fun things uh that happened on a delivery offshore just a little refueling stop in the middle of the ocean um I've remembered that, and there were times on Wandering Dolphin when we were getting low on toilet paper, for one thing, that I actually considered. There was, we had on our 38-day passage, we had a, uh, a time where the closest ship that ever came to us on that 38-day passage was actually nine miles away, and it was still over the horizon, but they called us on the radio and stuff, and I contemplated asking them for some toilet paper, but I didn't in the end. And I didn't, not because I thought I shouldn't, but because I was too chicken to motor my boat up next to a huge tanker offshore. Dick, you, my friend, are the boss. Hope you come along on some of my voyage. I would love to sail with you again anytime. That's it for MIG this time. We'll see you on Friday with the final bowsprit uh, video. It's the installation of the bowsprit. Probably some of you are going to go, why did you do it the way you did it? It worked. Also, I had to make the chain plates for the side uh, because I'm changing the bowsprit so that the end of the bowsprit is actually used so that I can switch it to a Solent rig. So I had to make some little bronze chain plates and install them. And so that's also in this next video on Friday. 
which will actually be tomorrow because this will get out on Thursday. So thanks a lot. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow.